Uh, so welcome to the, uh, the May 25th, 2023 Common Metrics Meeting. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, looks like we, we have a, actually it's a pretty short agenda today. If anyone does have any agenda items to add, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, but with that, I, I suppose we could jump right into the agenda. Uh, and the, uh, at the top of the list, we have the, uh, have, there's a discussion going on currently about uh, context and keyword, uh, keywords in the metrics. So we've been talking about removing the, uh, the context and keywords from the metrics uh, pages. Uh, the keywords themselves do appear on WordPress. Uh, so it, uh, for the keywords, it was a matter of duplication. Uh, I suppose uh, we can open that up for discussion if anyone has any thoughts on it. Uh, the one, the one thing I would say about the context and keywords that mm -hmm. is that if uh, uh, determining whether or not they are included in the 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 metrics pages is, I think is kind of depends on what their their purpose was. So if if the purpose is primarily to help navigation on the website then removing them is kind of a, a no, no brainer question in my mind. Uh, but if those keywords are actually part of the specification for this metric, uh, you know, part of the description, then, then I could make the argument that, uh, there's, that there would be value in keeping them in the metrics uh, on the metrics pages. So I think uh, my, have, go ahead, Bernard. Yeah, sorry. I have two thoughts. First is like as a reader uh, to the metric, I don't know what is the difference between context and keyword, or how do I distinguish them if if it is in the metric. Uh, so maybe a clarity, or maybe merging them as we discussed previously, that we can merge them together. So that is my first thought, and. Uh, my second thought was like uh, in the past we had a synonyms like how this metric is similar to other. That's where we wanted to keep them as a replacement. Like if I'm coming with some other context or some other word that I want to include or review, and is it similar to that metric or the context? So maybe these are the two reasons that it is. So I do think the the context words and the keywords are kind of two different issues for me. Uh, the context keywords, I think they're they are very much there to help with navigation. Uh, and I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any, I don't have any questions about removing them. I think that's removing the context words is fine. Uh, the keywords are the one that gets that where I have that question, and it's primarily because what you what you had just said, Vinod, we used to have synonyms, and the the keywords kind of took over that that synonym space. So when we have synonyms, keywords are where they go. Uh, so it does kind of become the the the, the that keyword line does kind of become uh, these are these are keywords that help describe the metric. And they're they're keywords that we would ask the uh, we would ask the groups to uh, to set when they're creating the metric. Uh, I'm once again I I'm not I don't have any strong feelings on it. I'm fine moving them completely. I just thought uh, uh, we should probably discuss the purpose of them first because I think that's relevant. Right now, at the bottom of a metrics page, Kevin, you know those the like WordPress tags. Uh -huh. What are are those the keyword or content? they are? Yeah. So if we were to keep them in the metrics page, there is replication and uh, kind of redundancy in I mean, them. To yeah. me, if they're generated by WordPress down at that bottom, uh huh, then I have no problem keeping them. Yeah, so they're they're not uh, they're not generated from WordPress, right? So the when we uh, we add them to WordPress. So sure. when we when we create the metrics page, the person that creates the metrics page on WordPress 
needs to go and find those keywords and and add them in manually. Yeah, yeah. Right. But like we don't do it as part of. Yeah. We're creating the uh, the GitHub page. We don't put them in there. Right. Like, and I like and I like the way this displays. I do too. Uh, and I also and I like the lack of repetition and not having them in the page. It it really is it really is kind of comes down to that. Are the keywords part of the metric specification? And if the if the keywords are part of that metric specification, then that that metrics page is kind of it's a one pager, right? So it, it should have that it should have those keywords in it. If the keywords are just here to help with navigation, then uh, and maybe I'm overthinking this, but separating them from the metrics page uh, from the actual metrics markdown page. I think this is good. I mean, the I I agree. I mean, I think the reason that we added these in the first place was to help with navigation. Okay. And this is a great way to do that. Yeah, I like this. I like this design, how they are down here at the bottom. I think it looks good. I think it's also nice because it ultimately, like overall, we've really been working to clean up the metrics by moving that, for example, that disclaimer down to the bottom, trying to get rid of the synonyms up on top and the keywords and context tags up on top. There was just so much going on in the metric that it was, I thought, sometimes a little distracting to get to the the real content of the metric. So I think this is great. This looks really good. And can we just like, can we just keep it, you know, we've been getting them via this. Is this still okay? I think so, but I think we also maybe need to start thinking about the uh, kind of the openness and transparency on this document. Because uh, because right now this is a bit of a closed document, right? It's not a it's not something we want to share uh, for we because share we don't uh, we we don't we don't publish it publicly anyway any anywhere because we don't want people to come in and and edit it haphazardly, right? It we do share it with the, people, but it is on the meeting agenda top. So like we share the meeting minutes link with everybody and we share these regularly with everybody. Okay. Well maybe maybe this is more maybe this is more open than I was thinking then. Cause like would would your option be to not have them here, but have them Oh no, we still need we still need them here. We always need them here. Where else do you want them? Well, I don't I don't, I don't actually need them anywhere else. So the only the only uh, the only consideration I had was whether or not they belonged on the uh, the metrics page because I th I think of that I think of that metrics markdown page as the as the specification that we're defining or creating for that metric, right? So the, the question is, are those keywords, are those synonyms part of the description? Uh, so are they, when we define these metrics, are these keywords part of that, that, uh, that metric that we're defining? Or are they, are we just creating them to help people find the, the metric? Does that make sense? So if we're, if we're just creating them to help find the metric, then the process around uh, creating those metrics and putting them in WordPress can be kind of uh, simpler, right? Uh, but if it's if it's actually part of the specification, then it it I think there's a there's a process that we need to go through, kind of like as part of the template, basically, right? So this this what I'm looking at here. Yeah. So what what are you suggesting we change here? So I'm. I'm I'm questioning whether the keywords need to be part of this template or whether we can just remove them. And by the way, and I'm fine just removing them if that's the consensus. 
uh, and I think that I think that is kind of that the consensus. So it's I I like the clean look of not having them. So mm -hmm. I just uh, I just wanted to make sure we had a conversation about it. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, if we can just keep them tracked here, and not necessarily ask people to put it in the GitHub page, that'd be fine by me too. That's kind of where you're going, right? Like What's that? That's where you're going to remove them from the template here. Uh -huh. And then we would also uh, at this point remove this from the template. Yeah, that needs to go too. Yeah, okay. And then, okay, well, that makes sense. And then when we when we create these metrics, we do need to make sure that the working group adds them to the Google Sheet. So, I mean, that is part of the, that would be part of the, the metrics definition process. So if we have that, if we have that process kind of documented somewhere, it should it should say uh, create keywords for the metric, right? Yeah, I was going to ask. Don't we have like guidance somewhere on like the formatting and like what to do with creating a metric? Did it we... was yes, there it, was a checklist. It was part of the template, uh, but I think during the cleanup process, it has been removed. We took it out. Okay. Uh, so it would be, uh, we could consider, I mean, if we if we want to document this process, which we should probably take parts that were removed and add them into maybe a separate document to document how to, maybe it's, maybe that, maybe the document is how to, how to create a metric or how to, uh, how to define a metric. So I know there is a, there was guidance in the template on how to do uh, uh, image links. And I, I know we just ran into that issue with, uh, in the model working group where they, were, they weren't using the right image links. I think we are talking about this file where we have this checklist. Uh... Yeah, we do have this. Yeah, so here we can add it to the like, uh, are the keywords added to the Excel sheet or Google sheet? Yeah, maybe we, maybe we rename this to metrics uh, release checklist or something like that uh, because we don't really do the, the candidate thing anymore. Yeah. Uh, so the renaming it, to something more explicit and then uh, <laughs> All right. and, th and then updating the list so that it's accurate. So I, I think a couple of those links point to the template maybe, or used to point to the template. Yeah, the, like the image convention, I think that points to the template. Yep. And uh, so oh. we have... I thought this was removed from the template. We have two documents in the same template that has similar things that can be merged together and keep them as a one document. Oh, it points to the, did it did that point to the metrics repo? Yep. Ah, which is archived. Okay. So we probably, uh, so, we probably need to fix that. Yeah. Uh, so I've posted uh, in the chat another link. So these two documents needs to be merged and like you know. Yeah. yeah. And maybe we call it how to how to define a metric and we can put it in that how to contribute folder. Yes. Anand, could I ask you to I know you're kind of working on a lot of these docs. Right. So I can merge them and create a new like single document 
first we review it in the me next meeting and then we can post it or whatever or i can put it in the slack for the feedback and then i do think it fits better in the how to contribute folder rather than the the resources folder though okay does anyone else think that as well or yeah i i hadn't thought that but it seems reasonable uh, um so it sounds like there's a few things here vinod so yeah. like we have like an old metrics template that's sitting in the yep in the metrics folder um sounds like we have an old like issue template you know that you had shown here that we have revising metric template like this this should all yes <laughs> be be brought together and i i the only reason i'm asking you to take a look at this because because i know you're going through all of right. the right this summer so right okay uh one note on the uh some of the guidance on that metric uh you don't need to worry about any of the guidance about uh bullet points so you can you can remove that completely. Okay. So, so that was connected to the Mars project, and that that project is. Uh, so are you saying we can nest our bullet points willy nilly, and that doesn't cause any problems anymore? I am saying that yes. <laughs> Please do, in fact. Please nest away. Okay. And where did you suggest it to keep that? Uh... Right, so that I can put it in the notes and when I review them and I'll, yeah. The how to uh, contribute folder. Okay. So I would take the, I would take the, that issue template document and make that your main document and just rename it to something like how to define a metric. Uh, and then add the information from the, uh, that the old metrics template document into it to okay. wherever, wherever needed. Okay. Yep. Oh, is it okay if we move on? Sure. And I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to the uh, oh no it's already it's already at the top I was gonna jump to the one that Ray had recommended since he's it's nice enough to join us today uh, so new metrics to consider uh, code review uh, health self merge rate uh, Ray do you wanna you wanna talk about this one uh, yeah I I mean not much beyond what I already mentioned on Slack but uh, I mean I'm seeing a lot of projects uh, that basically had a self merges. I mean, just to be negative, I mean, obviously things weren't even reviewed. There was no trace of reviewers or any even like looks good to me type of comments that are provided. So whoever submitted the PR just like merges them like within like, I mean, less than an hour, right? Because, and in some cases you see, it was obvious that the work was done in some private repo somewhere and they just moved it. They just cut it, copied and pasted it. And then, you know, uh, they feel like it's been tested in their private repo. So they're just going to merge them, which is not a healthy thing that you want to encourage in a collaborative project. Right. So, uh, I, I mean, I want to, in terms of naming, I think code review health is more, more positive. I mean, self merge rate just sounds, sounds negative. So, and then obviously you want to measure this, see a trend over a period of time because uh, if it's a new project which is a couple of people uh, then you can almost understand that happening although you don't want to see that but uh, it just to measure you know how projects have evolved especially as they're growing like it's it's a re review happening on a, on a regular on a regular basis or is this uh, I think Matt, you called it like open source and license only, right? They're they're not behaving like a real open source project. So my only my only concern yeah. with naming it code review health is that mm -hmm. um I think that there's probably other things that we could measure that would also indicate code review health. Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm wondering if code review health might be a metrics model 
and something around, maybe we rename it like self-merge rate. I agree that that's kind of negative. Maybe there's a better, Mm -hmm. a better thing that we could call it, but I'm wondering if this self-merge rate plus maybe some other things, um, so bummer Sean's not on this call because I think he'd have a perspective on this. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm completely okay with renaming. I mean, I just I just made that up. Um, yeah, but uh, completely open to any suggestions. But if if just want to make sure people are okay with the kind of spirit of what we're trying to measure for open source projects, or yeah, I'll say I kind of like the name self merge rate. Yeah. It gets right to the point. <laughs> There's clear to understand what it is. So for what it's worth. But from DEI perspective, it gives a negative. Yeah. I... Merge rate that doesn't include other people. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the, the language that we use, uh, around reviews are we call them change request reviews Mm -hmm. so we have a we have we do have a lot of metrics around change request reviews right so change request review duration uh we have review cycle uh duration within a change request uh evolution has change request duration change request decline or i'm sorry uh uh, change request reviews is actually a, a metric. Uh, so I suppose if we were to use merge self rate, maybe it's change request self merge rate or is it a, is it about the is it about the self merging or is it about the uh, the reviews? What about this? number of change request participants like if if your number is consistently one that would imply that you have one person you're averaging about one person per change request which would imply that they are merging or like merged so we have a we have a metric that is being considered called change request reviewers where is that uh it's evolution metric but i think that's different because you can have zero change request reviewers and still have someone else merge the pull request um and and it doesn't actually get what what at least what github would consider a review it just gets on merge okay so this is very this is about the self-merge and not necessarily the review part or it's primarily about the self-merge it's the self-merge with no reviews from anyone else i think is maybe right. yeah this wouldn't quite do it then because this could have reviews which reviewers which wouldn't yeah. yeah i mean i've seen cases where like it's normal for submitters to merge or re- merge their pull requests after the review's done i still think that's not a good thing um but i mean first you know, like I said, again, small projects or small companies is somewhat understandable that you have like one CTO and like maybe one other engineer that you could conceivably see that happen. Um, but you still don't want to see that after the project grows, right? So yeah, the naming is a little tough. Uh, it is. And I've also the other the other way I've seen this happen that is not necessarily a negative is that um, I've seen a couple of times within us, and I've discouraged this, so we don't, I don't think we do this anymore. But within the CNCF tag contributor strategy, sometimes what we would do is we would actually review the pull request together for something that you know we really wanted more feedback on, and we'd review it together in a meeting. So the meeting is public, mm-hmm. the meeting's recorded. Um, and then at the end, sometimes the person who had just created the PR would go ahead and merge it. Um, I've, I've discouraged that because I don't, I don't think people should be merging their own PRs for even, even if you've had a bunch of people talking about it, I think someone else should do the merge. Um, but that's, that's another, just another edge case, I think.
I really like the idea of defining this metric. I think we're struggling to name it, um, yeah. which maybe we can think more about. And you could actually, you know what, we could we could start defining it and call it self-merge rate. And as we define it, um, sometimes we either either we decide that the name wasn't so bad after all, or um, it gives people time to think about maybe a better name. Yeah, I like that. We can just, yeah, use this as a placeholder name and then Mm -hmm. We can figure that out later. Yeah, plus one to that. And I and I also agree with the previous statement uh, that was made that uh, code review health is probably a model. Yeah. And and we probably have we probably already have the metrics defined for it uh, after we do this one, maybe. Yeah, that, that's what I was kind of wondering, but I haven't really been involved in a lot of the change request um definitions but um but yeah it'd be great to i think to have this as a model for code review health or whatever we call it i think i think the model can be called uh whatever we want it to be called it doesn't have to be connected to the if it was if we we're going by metrics naming it would have to be like change request review health uh, but but i don't think the the models have to go by the uh <laughs> those metrics naming conventions Ray, could I maybe ask you to oops, maybe start the metric? Um, yeah. This is usually, these are description and objectives. Mm -hmm. so the two really good places to start. Right. And the question. Oh, yeah, sure. That too. Is this like, I? sorry, it's been a while. Is this, do we do this in Google Docs just to start or? Yeah, I can start okay. a Google Docs. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Or I wasn't sure if there was like an issue template or something that I can use instead. But yeah, either one's fine. Like, yeah, we do start it in Google Docs. We use the mm -hmm. the um, markdown, the template. Yep. And then we would just add it here. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, just... I've, I posted the link to the template that we put it in the Google Doc and then start filling the description, question, objectives, and other things. Okay, yeah, happy to do it. I could create the Google Doc, or if you want to create it, either way it works. Yeah, I'll. that's fine. I'll create it, because I can create it yeah. under chaos. Yep. Yep. And then I'll just share that with you. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I was actually just reading through the change of request reviews metrics and how that kind of fits in, but yeah, let me read through that offline and yeah, definitely this could all go under the metrics model, I guess, at some point. But, okay. Yep. Thanks, Ray. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh next next new metric or maybe this is is this a new metric or is this editing? Oh, this is the one we're pushing to next week. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's just we're trying to word the change request closure ratio metric better so that people actually understand what it's what it's trying to measure and how we're measuring it. Okay, and we'll just push that to next week. Thanks. Okay, uh, after that, we have a metric called second contribution. Uh, this metric came from the uh, open science context con context group. Uh, so one of the uh, uh, one of the people from, I think, uh, is it a uh, NumFocus? Yeah. One of the Python projects said that, uh, and kind of nonchalantly said that this metric is one of the main metrics that they look at. So second, second contribution. So we, uh, uh, if it's, if it's that important to them, we, uh, decided maybe we should take a peek at it. And this is something Sean has been talking about for a long, long time, taking a look at second contributions. Don, I don't know if he's ever worked with you on that, um, but I know that this is something that has come up for, I feel like years is something that he's been kind of focusing on. Um, and I, I think it's just, it's, it's really about just trying to identify like um, just the contributor base and just whether people are sticking around is really the, it's pretty simple premise. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's related, it's different, but it's related to um, the model that Grimoire Lab uses, where it's like, you know, got the drive-through contributors or what they call them, casual contributors, regular contributors, core contributors. So these are like, like the casual contributors who came back um, yeah. because you can have casual contributors that like drop one, one like, contribution and you never see an idea. Um, so I, I really like the idea of looking at second contribution. I yeah. think it's really interesting. Um, Sorry. Like, so is it, is it about who that person is, who is making or what their contribution is or the time between? I don't know about the time. I, from my understanding is that you're seeing an increase in you would like to see an increase in second contributors within your community. Okay, so it's the number of folks who are making a second contribution in a certain period of time. Yeah, and and by the way, we do have we do have a metric we define called occasional contributors, which is based on that idea of uh, uh, which is which is basically drive by contributors, uh, except renamed. Is that at all? Is that something we could use in this? Uh, you know I mean? Yeah, I think we. I think we'll need to look at it if we're gonna if we're gonna define if we're gonna define this metric. But I, uh, you think there's? I think this is a this is a different metric. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just kind of uh, related to the other one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just put myself down as a, a an action item. I can make a Google Doc for this while I'm making the one for. Uh, self-merge rate so that's easy enough and i'll get those into the spreadsheet as well so I, i'm assuming this the second contribution metric the purpose of this metric is to see is to kind of determine how i don't know how welcoming the group is or if the community manager is is doing things to try to build the community is is second contribution a, a measure that these these onboarding uh, mechanisms and uh, the welcomeness of the community is is good. Is that is that what we're is that what this is uh, the second contribution is about? Kind of a a measure of whether or not we're succeeding in in onboarding. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't quite know. We can ask uh, Inessa and Melissa. Those are the two folks that are kind of leading that working group. Um, I do know that welcomingness was a really important thing for Melissa, uh, again, in these Python communities. So she works like in communities like Pandas. And this was a welcomingness was a really important part mm -hmm. for her. So you might be right, Kevin. I just don't know if it's, we can ask them, makes sense. That's one of the reasons I would want to look at something like this okay. is because I, I do think it gets at how welcoming the community is because if somebody shows up and, and does something and then goes away, then they probably either, either they didn't have a very good experience or it was just, it was just sort of a one-off and they don't really, don't really care about the project. Okay. If it's uh if it is about kind of building community then I think maybe there is a time component to it as well. I have that here. What's that? I have at least over time. Oh, over time. Okay. So not just a count, not just a count of yep. people making second contributions, but also the amount of time between their first and second con contributions? Well, the overtime here was just like changes over time. That always happens. So like, um, does that number change? So we have a, we'd have like a oh, moving, gotcha. moving window. And then does that change within that? So oh, it's, it's more, more of a kind of a second contribution rate, right? That's what I was just gonna say. Would it be better as like a ratio? Uh, what's the ratio new new contributors um i'm trying to think of how to say this new contributors who come to your project do first time contributors of, of all the first time contributors how many of those folks came back and did a second contribution yeah or is it just a count like would we care about percentage i guess versus 
if we have a hundred percent, then that's great. It might be a little more it, it, that I was just thinking that might be a little more applicable across projects to look at the rate versus account. Yeah. The ratio versus the count. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's really, that's really interesting. I mean, it makes it a little more, a little more complex to measure it, but I think it might be a better measure to look a at. A little more universal, it. maybe. Because if somebody's getting, mm -hmm. you know, if a project is getting a thousand first time contributors and 900 of those make a second contribution, that's very different than if a project is getting, you know, a hundred thousand first time contributions and 900 of them come back. Those are very different scenarios. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Well, we could take these thoughts back to the people that proposed it and see what they think. Yeah, I was just thinking like yep. in an OSPO setting, if you're trying to look at a bunch of different projects at the same time, that might be a, a better way to kind of keep them all in alignment. Because that's where like, I, I figure like this is from, since it's from the open science, OSPO-ish kind of people, folks, I don't know. Would there be Even a within your own project, I think it helps contextualize it because if you don't know how many first time contributions there were, how many second contributions there were is less, I think, impactful of a metric. Would there be a, an issue with the time window? So if it was like a three month time window, like how would you time box it, I guess, would be my question. That would be another curious filter to look at. Like if, if you know, your rate is 90%, but it takes three years for someone to come back, then, then maybe there's a, a, a steep learning curve. <laughs> but if it's, you know, first time contributors, but then in next month, the, you know, the 90% have come back, then that's, that's also okay. So then the mm -hmm. time window would be like, how many of your first time contributors come back within a month? Within a month, within a year, within five years, whatever. Yeah. I do. I find this. I find this one really interesting because it's it's a metric that we could actually we could actually almost test in a lot of ways, right? If you're if we have like an onboarding initiative running, we can test to see if our second contribution ratio improves during this onboarding initiative, or uh, or through through completion of better documentation or things like that. It's 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 almost it's almost a metric we could use to to actually measure if we are improving in, which is I, I think that's a little rare to to find one that is this easy to measure or or would be this telling. I mean, I think it it'll also kind of tell you if you got your first contributors through some sort of a gimmick like Hacktoberfest or something, right? yeah. and then they don't come back. So. I mean, in terms of a time frame, like if it's long, longer than a year, I think it's almost like if they don't come back within a year, that's then I think it's almost like meaningless, right? I mean, meaningless is probably a strong word, but they become first time again. Yeah. Yeah. It's if they only contribute during Hacktoberfest, then it tells you something, right? So shall we we'll take this one back to the open science folks and ask them some more questions yeah. about it and then yeah, and then these, bring it back to common. Yeah, I think these are good questions for for Anessa and Melissa. Okay. Yep. Maybe we could talk about this one, Kevin, because I know that was Yeah, so that one should be pretty close to being done if you want to go ahead and click on that. So the event location equity metric. So this this metric is actually an edited metric. So previously it was just called event location. Uh, and we, we've been going through and kind of defining some metrics around event location inclusivity and event location uh, accessibility. Is that the other one we did? Yep. Uh, so event, event location equity is is one that kind of came from that, right? So it's a, it's about the uh, where conference events are located and all and it's also about how they are distributed in relation to the community uh, so we've been working on this one out of uh 
the DEI working group for the most part. Uh, however, uh, event location, the, the metric that we are editing is actually owned by common. So we, we defined, we originally defined this metric, uh, a year or so ago. Uh, so we wanted to, uh, uh, bring it back here to get comments and, uh, uh, to see if anyone, uh, I don't know if we want to do a, a shared edit or if we just want to take a peek at it. Uh, I think it's pretty close. We probably don't have time for a shared edit because we have two minutes. Oh, running out of time. Yeah, but I, I, I agree. I think it's, it's close. I think we did a good job in DEI yesterday. Just kind of weaving in the equity component into the existing metric into the the data collection yeah kind of that, that premise yeah. um to me i think it, it looks good so if we were to release this this is just an update to that correct it's this document would be it's an update to the event location metric which is already published okay i guess maybe the only thing we'd want to think about is here event locations that's yep. it right there and so like we probably want to update this a little bit the keywords to include things like equity uh -huh. You know, it's like that. Uh, I wouldn't use inclusion uh, just for uh, so there there is there is a difference between inclusion and equity, and the uh, event location inclusion inclusivity is is a different metric. Oh. So just for just for clarity, I wouldn't include it. Okay. Uh, well, maybe just include equity. As part of the keywords, and then we would change this to event location equity. Correct. Yep. Maybe change the yeah we've been released. And then is this the right? I'm gonna get rid of. Okay, so we would need to then move this. Okay. So this has to be copied to overwrite this, is that correct? Uh, to overwrite the Google Doc to the metric and then the, uh, uh, well, I put in a pull request to the GitHub. We have to, to put in a pull request to fix it here, yeah. Okay. And we are, yeah, we are out of time. Does somebody want to take this on really fast? They could copy this, you know, just just copy all of this text and update this. Yeah, I can I can do that. Okay. So the 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 pull request part, right? Yeah. Yep, I can do that. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, we are at 1052, so I think we are out of time. I, th I think we can uh, we can end recording now if we want like. Okay, well, thanks everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye everybody.